You all right, Quinn? Yeah, mate, yep. It's going back down again a bit now, so definitely a bit of weight there. There's a leader, where's the fish? I just saw a bit of colour there, yeah. Oh, <laughs> that is a belter. Over the years, I've visited and fished the surrounding waters of Port Stephens on a heap of different occasions. And on most trips I've done there, the target species has always been marlin. On this trip, I was teaming up with a mate of mine from Melbourne, Quinn Scott, and Port Stephens local, George Trinkler. I fished with both Quinny and George on many occasions. Quinny and I have been game fishing together for a number of years now while George has been my number one fishing contact on the New South Wales mid-north coast and it's always a priority to catch up with him for a fish whenever I'm in that neck of the woods. George also spends a fair bit of the year working on game boats in Fiji and I've been lucky enough to have travelled with him there on quite a few memorable trips. On this trip however, the three of us are going to spend a day fishing in the port, only a stone's throw from the Soldiers Point boat ramp. Fishing at Port Stephens, the home of marlin fishing on the east coast of Australia, with my good mate George Trinkler. We're catching the live bait, everything's good. There's no game gear in the boat. Apparently, George, we're not marlin fishing again. Last time I came here with you, we didn't go marlin fishing. No, we're taking it easy today, Lee. We're gonna have a day in the harbour. What's the go, mate? Uh, there's a little jewfish spot just up around the corner there. Yep. We might go and give that a try first. Well, I'll tell you what. That's not a bad second place, I reckon, because Jewies down in Melbourne, they're like ghosts. In most of the country, they're like ghosts. So hopefully we can find some. Not in Port Stephens, they're not, mate. That's a go. Let's see you having a go there, mate. That is ready. Just put a new bait jig on for Quinny, and let me tell you, when there's bait jigs and there's bait jigs, and for small bait jigs, Black Magic really do the best ones. So those tiny little gold hooks, they are just so sharp, and this is all UV pink material. They also do one with UV green, and it really makes a difference when you're catching your bait, because I'll just pick at it, and those ultra sharp hooks will catch your live baits far quicker every time. Get the best bait jig you can, because you're catching big fish. Yum, yum. Little lollipops. What's the plan here, George? What we're doing here, Lee, is just having a look along the edge. Yep. There's a big hole through here. Okay. Drops from 10 metres down to about 30 metres, and you'll see the bait stacked up on the edge here. Yep. That's what the jewfish come in to feed on. George, will the jewies sit right down in the hole, or do they push up to feed, or? Well, as you see here, the bait's in tight on the ledge. Yep. On the drop-off. Yep. And the reason the bait's in there is that it's trying not to get eaten. Yeah. <laughs> it's the safest spot for it to hang out. Sure. So I'm just having a look here with a little Lorance, just trying to find out if there's any, you know, bigger marks there, like mark any jewfish. Do we drift through here or? Uh, we'll drift through until we find the fish. Yeah. And then we'll anchor up. Sounds like a pretty simple program. Glad he's driving. I'm using the little blue Gamoku with the Komodo bait caster. Quinny's got the Imperium with a Selena 3000. And the rig is very simple, but it's got a very good purpose. A short dropper, a 50 pound Black Magic Tough Trace to a KL70 circle, just like that. Circles work so well for this sort of stuff. And then I've got about a five foot dropper down to the sinker. However, halfway down, there's a small join there and we've got just some 15 pound line and the idea being if and when you hook your mull away, if he runs over a ledge or through a bit of reef, they don't intentionally snag you up. If this gets caught up, it'll snap off, you'll get your rig back, you'll get your fish back and it's a much better way to go. We'll just get the live bait, pin him just behind the back of the head, send him down, he'll just swim around and hopefully invite some big predators up. trick with this rig too is to keep that dropper off the main line where your hook's going to be. Keep it short. If it gets too long, the bait will spin around and swim around too much and it can cause tangles with the other line. Also, on that shorter lead, you'll kick around a lot more and that invites the bites much quicker. Got 
Got him on, George. Nice one, mate. Can we always kick it out of gear for a sec, or you're right? Yeah, I'm right, mate. Bite time. It is, isn't it? Keep working our way through these little fellas, Lee. Yeah. Hopefully, we'll soon get a, a big one. That's it. We'll save you, do. We're in the preschool at the moment. You would have heard George just call that fish a soapy jew. They call that because their meat is soft and soapy and they're really not great eating it the small size. So small jews are best let go. George, what size would you say that they become good eating? Oh, the smaller fish are quite good. Day once they're around like three or four kilos. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the size limit's just changed to 70 centimetres, so they have to be a reasonable sized fish now. Yeah. They're also a fish that they farm, Lee. Are they? They breed them in the Taylor's Beach Fishery Station in here. Okay. And do they release them all through here or just for they commercial? They stock, uh, stock a few lakes with them. Yep. I'm on a lolly break, Quinny's casting the plastic around and straight away gets smashed. Really interesting, George, you're saying before you get a lot of fish in this area on lures. Yeah, the soft plastics work really well. Lee, just work the bottom five metres of the water, bounce them off the bottom, wind them up about five metres, free spool them back down. You often get hit on the drop. Well done, Queenie. Well done, mate. Did he smash that? I didn't even see it. No, he sort of smashed it, but then just buckled over, but now it's just sort of, yeah, give it a weight. I thought I'll tell you what I'm going to do, mate. I'm going to grab the net just so I can net him. Let's get this net together. Big rubber mesh. Makes life easy. We'll just sit in that comfortably. You all right, Quinn? Yeah, mate. It's taking a bit of line now. Yeah, he's starting to peel a little bit off now, there. He didn't mess around like those little bites that we had earlier. He just boom, boom. That's how it's supposed to work, Lee. Exactly, mate, exactly. Is it right on the part of the tide, George, you would expect to get a bite? Mate, this was my last drift and I was going to move. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, this, this is me Hail Mary coming back down here into the deeper water. Yeah, okay. I like this sort of fishing too, you know, and Quinny and I this morning have already learnt a lot, so much Mulloway fishing that most people do is anchoring and just sitting there and you're basically waiting for the fish to come past. And a Mulloway is a fish that doesn't tend to move around a lot. And doing what we're doing here, George has just been working us back and forth through the holes and different areas of it and, and we're going to the fish. So something, Quinny, I think you and I will be doing a lot more back home. Yeah, I reckon we might be able to yeah, take a few of these techniques and use them for yeah. sure. He definitely didn't feel like a big one to start with. Well, it didn't, definitely didn't feel like nah. there was much size to him at all. I might get the big net head out, I think. He'll possibly start to float just when you see him in that, yep. just before you net him, like don't rush. Yep. I'll get the big net head out just in case. I want to make sure we get this guy. Straight down there, mate, yeah, is he? Yeah, straight up and down, mate, yeah. Better than he's a touch forward of us. Do you want me to go forward? Yeah, I'll... Yeah, he's going forward again now, yeah. Out of sight, out of the way. I'll get my livey out of the way. Hey, Quinny, I don't reckon there's too many fish in this country that get your heart right up in your mouth like these things, do they? Nah, not at all, mate. Yeah, till they're sort of, till you see them and they're in the net, they're sort of, what you say, your heart's in your mouth. Just big weight, isn't it? Yeah, to start with, I even thought, like, almost was rage to start with. Oh, serious? Did absolutely, yeah, and I thought, uh... <laughs> oh, great, now get out of the way here, get this bait in the tube. As George said, as soon as we get this fish, we are going straight back on that mark. You all right, Quinn? Yeah, mate, yep. Just going back down again a bit now, so definitely a bit of weight there. There's it leader, where's the fish? I think I just saw a bit of colour there, yeah. Oh! <laughs> that is a belter. Well done, Quinny. That is maybe the biggest Jew I've ever seen. <laughs> well done, mate. George. 
Show me some love, man. That is, <laughs> that is not right. a right. Thank you, George. Karua River oh. Barrows, mate. <laughs> yeah. Mate, that is <laughs> that is the biggest mulloway I could ever dream of seeing. All right, you ready? Quinny, grab his tail. George, I'll slide this net back. This is a multi-person job. Look at that. Have a go at the size of that, Quinny. <laughs> Woo! Look. Baby! Oh, Have a that go is at it. Awesome. That is the fish of 10 lifetimes. Look at this circle hook right in the corner of his jaw. Exactly what they're supposed to do. <laughs> I'll get in the middle. Top job on the rod there, Quinny, too. That just showed Quinny's calm, cool, collected angling. George's boat driving and light fishing tackle, you can catch anything. Have a go at that sucker. <laughs> <laughs> that is so big, it's stupid. Oh, I don't well, think I'll well bother trying to fish for him anymore. Mate. <laughs> he can't he top that one. <laughs> Mate, he'll sit there for years before you get another oh, one like man, that. Man, that me. is. I haven't seen a Jew that size for years. I fish for him all the time. That is the fish of dreams. Hang on one sec, mate. mate that is a beautiful fish. That is the absolute fish of dreams on an eight kilo spin stick. You boys are champions. What do you reckon, Lee? It's been a fantastic day. Well, it's been fantastic for some, George. But I think we've missed the best of the tide now, haven't we? Yeah, the tide's changed, mate. Mm. No, well, Quinny caught his fish of a lifetime. You've got to be happy with that one, mate. mate Quinny got a stonker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice work, mate. Has been a lot of fun and something very different from just heading up here to Port Stephens and going marlin fishing. We couldn't have done it without George, and I know Quinny is going to be banging on about this fish for the next 13 hours as we drive back <laughs> to Melbourne. It's going to be a long drive home for you guys. Oh, very long. <laughs> yeah, enjoy the trip back to Melbourne, boys. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks. But that is what fishing for a fish of a lifetime is all about. It's not a numbers game, it's just about one big fish and that's one that I know Quinny's gonna remember till the day he's put in the grave. Let's get out of here. Big fish are my favorite species. They are, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Lakes Entrance in Eastern Victoria is our next destination on today's episode. Well known as a popular tourist and fishing location for both professional and recreational fishermen, Lakes is one of those places that offers anglers an array of options throughout most of the year. On this trip down to lakes, I was going to be chasing something a little different. So as the sun started to disappear behind the horizon, it was time to hit the water and get down to business. It's just got dark and we're heading out fishing, but tonight it's with a bit of a difference. We've got the prawn net, the flounder light or the prawn light, we are at Lake's entrance, it's the new moon period and we've got a big run out tide that's about to happen and the locals tell us that the prawns have been absolutely awesome the last couple of weeks. So fingers crossed tonight, the big guys will be up on the surface swimming and we'll get ourselves a great feed. Let's get to it. The beauty of what we're doing here is it's so easy and it's so much fun. You can do it, walk in the shallows like I did as a kid in St George's Basin with my grandparents every summer and with my sister. Or you can come down here, put the boat in the water and we're gonna fish in the main channel here at Lakes Entrance before it flows into the ocean. It's dead calm, it's very safe and what we're doing here is waiting for the prawns to come to us effectively. We're gonna be in about four or five meters of water and with the tide flow, the prawns will swim on the surface We'll have our flounder lights and a big long handled net and we'll be able to scoop them up just as they come to us. It's a whole lot of fun and best of all you hopefully end up with what is some of the finest seafood in the ocean. I just love eating fresh prawns. What is the size of that? That is not a prawn, that's a crocodile. That is insane. How's this? It was quiet for a bit. That tide turned and straight away. Look at that. <laughs> that is not bad. It was like, it's so instant. You cannot believe just the slightest trickle of run out tide. And these guys are just popping up everywhere. Look, there's another one in the light out there. Look at the size of him. Come here. Here he comes. Got him. That is why you want the long handle prawn net too. That is a big prawn, look at that. They grow about 10 mil a month, and on this moon, what they're actually doing 
is heading out into the ocean, getting back out of here. So you'll get a massive, massive run of prawns. And these Gippsland Lakes is just so big that it holds thousands of tons of prawns and as recreational anglers. It's awesome for us because we can catch them, but we really don't even scratch the surface for the amount of prawns that are actually here. Got him, there we go. And I just found that with it being so calm, this little headlamp's doing a great job. The prawns are really getting up on the surface and swimming around. And when they start to swim, that's what you can end up with in a matter of seconds. And they are all big prawns. I mean, that one there, he is nothing special. That's been like an average size. And the great thing about getting these guys in the tide, as they come down, they've got these great big long feelers and they can sense everything that's going on. And as they come roaring down in the tide, you just hold the net in front of them. And in most cases, they'll just pour straight into it because their tentacles are going backwards as they push forward in the tide. They're still not easy to catch, but because there's lots of them, it doesn't matter when you miss a few. There's a couple of absolute belters in here, but overall, they're just all big prawns. You don't want to try and get too cute either and load too many prawns in your net because what'll happen is as you get too many, it holds the bag open a little bit. And you'll be trying to scoop one prawn and one will try and swim out and you can end up losing more than you get. All right, what have we got? They definitely come through in waves. You'll sit here and just see nothing for a minute and then you'll just see the eyes just glowing coming towards you. You know, three or four or five prawns just work their way down the tide. Oh, hang on. I've actually got two nets here. I've got the thinner, more standard prawn net with a smaller hoop and a nice light handle. And that's been really good when the prawns were darting around a bit more. But what's happened in the last little bit is I've had a lot of prawns are on the surface and they're sitting quite wide. And this hooker net having a great big long handle like that allows me to have a big reach, but it's also got a great big hoop on it. The only thing is you do need to be careful of is being a big open bag like that. If you hold it in the water for too long, the prawns can get out of it quite easily, but it works nicely because it's that big hoop. The prawns come into it, they don't feel anything being mesh or, or stuff, and they just tend to go in quite easily. And it's doing the job at the moment, but once the prawns start coming back in, because they come in different waves, I'll probably just swap straight back to the, the smaller lighter net. But for now, this guy's doing the job. I might actually empty it out while I've got a bit of a quiet stretch. Pull the corner up, shake it. And we are getting quite a bag of prawns, but look at that, there's some absolute hooters. I like that guy there. I'm just gonna measure this guy quickly because I want to get back to the prawning just to give us an idea. There you go, a 19 centimetre long prawn out of an estuary. It doesn't get much better than that. This is crazy. You hear them say, the prawns are running. The prawns are running. The prawns are swimming. I've got to get this jumper off. I am seriously getting too hot here. This is a serious workout. I am, I've been trying to take my jumper off for the last few minutes. I've actually got to empty this net. I have to empty the net because it's getting a bit too full and it's actually getting really hard to move it through the water. It's really hard to stop when they're going like that. You sort of go, I've got to empty the net, but you know, your, your brain's saying one more, just one more. Oh, and you will about finish the night off. There we go. It is well past midnight. There's only a tiny little bit of the tide left. And I'm starting to see plenty of prawns still coming through, but they're more of a an average size sort of prawn. I'm getting pretty tired. I've had an absolute ball catching these guys and I have got myself an absolutely sensational tub of prawns and there's a lot of big ones in there. The normal size prawn, we're going to take them back, sort them out and I'll just cook them up, boil them and then be able to eat them cold. The big guys, I'm going to freeze them individually. Just put them on a tray so they freeze solid and then I can peel them, marinate them, do whatever, put them on skewers, cook them on a barbie, either way. We have a whole lot of great seafood to eat here and I can't wait to be chowing down on this in a little while. 
But for now, it's time to head in. 